Greetings, Imperial Brothers, and welcome back. Alright, so... I don't know. I really don't know anymore. Um, okay, so last time, she said there was a tax man that was bugging her, but I couldn't, like, ask her about it. And so I went to, like, the main part of the Olms building and just talked to random people, and sure enough, there was some dude, I forget his name, who was asking if I'd seen her. But my only options were like, I don't have time for questions or no. And so I thought, hey, maybe since I've found him now, because I guess you guys said that's the way that it's traditionally done. You're supposed to talk to him first and then come down and talk to her. You wish um, to speak? That I've come back down to her now. And, but now I can ask her about census and excise agent instead of tax men. Which is a slightly... Yeah, because last time she asked... Or she told me about... There was a, how there was a tax man bugging her. And then the next time I came back down to talk to her... After having discovered... The guy that was looking for her, She now says there's a census and excise agent... That's like bugging her. You don't know... You do not know this? They're the collectors of the Emperor's taxes and tariffs. And the Emperor has outlawed trade in many things... Like Dwemer artifacts and ebony. And a census and excise agent will enjoy being a pest about such things. For several reasons, a census and excise agent is not Adhirinir's favorite person. If you want Adhirinir to help you, make the bad agent go away. Hmm. Then she will tell you things. Okay. Perhaps your ears are clogged? Well, uh, well you, you can give me his name, hmm? No, I guess you can't. Ed Hirner was too concerned about the agent to answer my questions. Maybe I can do something to get rid of him. Alright, so I guess we're on the path again. Back to him once more. Oh, God. Alright, so let me just get back to him. And we'll see if we have a, the proper prompt to deal with him this time. I'll know it when I see it. Was it down here? No, that's where I just was. Okay. I do get... Yes. Oh, it was this guy. It was this guy right here. Yes, as I said, I'm looking for a friend of mine, a female Khajiit named Adhirinir. I thought you might be able to help tell me where to find her. Okay, cool. Now I can lie and say I don't know. Yes, her name is Adhirinir, and she is a Khajiit. Do you know where I can find her? Yes, she just took a gondola to the mainland. What a disappointment, but thank you for your time. I was just heading back to the mainland myself anyway. Maybe I'll Cool. Alright, so we got him off her tail. Well, excuse the pun. I think you're gonna be very happy out here and here. Here I come. To bestow upon you good news. So, are you the one at here and here must think for getting rid of the annoying census and excise agent? Yes, indeed. At here and here is very glad to see you and very happy to tell a friend of my good friend Caius all about the Six House cult. And Adhirinir knows nothing about the Nerevarine, but Adhirinir is happy to tell you that too, if it makes Kaius happy. Ask away, friend young man. Okay, tell me about... Yeah, tell me about this. Yes, Adhirinir knows nothing about the cult, because it is just silly superstition. So you tell Kaius this. Okay, thank you for your assistance. Nobody in her right mind pays attention to this nonsense. Prophecies and ancient heroes reborn, and other silliness, fuzzy tales for little kitties. Okay, tell me about this thing. Adhirinir knows about this because it is about smuggling. Some smart smugglers are suddenly too busy for their old clients because they have a new employer, the Sixth House. He pays very well, but what do they smuggle now? Adhirinir doesn't know because they are very secret. And this is odd because these smugglers are always loud and bragging. And now they hush up like fat-bellied kitties full of sweet meats. I don't like the way she talks. It's it's kind of creepy. Smuggling is big business. The Empire says that we can't trade skooma, moon sugar, ebony. Ebony? You can't trade ebony? What's wrong with that? Dwemer artifacts, exotic Dunmer weapons, and armor are s and slaves. Okay, that makes sense. So smugglers trade these things. Smugglers also smuggle grief, shine, and sujama to avoid imperial tax. You know, the Sixth House hires smugglers, but what they smuggle... Adhere in your cannot say. I just helped you out so you could say. Okay. Well, I guess this will have to do. 
Hmm. Or she. It, it. Oh. Does she just mean I cannot say as in I don't know what it is? She made it sound like she was holding something back. But in the journal, it says Adherner couldn't find out what they were smuggling. She found it strange that smugglers usually brag about their smuggling or suddenly being very quiet. Yeah, well, because it's probably serious shit. They don't want the hammer of the empire coming down on them, right? It's kind of dumb. It's just in general to be a smuggler and brag about it. It's like being a thief and bragging about it. Okay, so I think that's all I need. That's all the information I can get from her. Now we need to visit the last of the three contacts since I got the book from Mira Milo. I need to visit... All right. We spoke with Adhiranir. Um, now we need to speak with Hulia, an Argonian in the foreign quarter. Okay. Off to the foreign quarter we go. All right. This Argonian Hulia is going to be at the Black Shack Corner Club. Let's see. Hello, young man. No problem. Happy to help. Do you need services here in Vivek? I need to find out about Julio. Julio. The Argonian Morag Tong. Not many Argonians in the Morag Tong. Okay. I look for him at the Black Sh... Oh, it's not Black Shack. It's Black Shock? I don't understand. Corner Club. Have I been reading that wrong for the whole Let's Play series? I've always called it Black Shack Corner Club. Whatever. In the lower waste works of the foreign quarter. This is where I am. Or at Joe Bosch's books on the same level. Okay. Sweet. So we just gotta find Black Shack. Black Shock Corner Club. Whatever it is. I like Black Shack Corner Club. It's got a ring to it. Alright, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? These all lead to the same place. Oh, oh. Canal works. No, I just want the. Uh, where are like the shops and everything? Every door leads. Out of the area. That's not what I want. This is the happening place. The one thing I think almost every Elder Scrolls game has in common is that there's always a bigger presence of guards than there is of civilians in every town. And it creates a weird, very militaristic authoritarian almost atmosphere it's really weird like there's only like two well there's three dudes hanging around but then there's like three guards per hallway and it's just it's odd puts me a little on edge oh here we go here's some more shops apothecary there we go now i'm finding them alchemist okay he's they said he might be at Joe Bosch's rare books. So let's take a look. Just because we happen to be here. Julio, my man. Where you at? I see absolutely no one. Oh. Oh no, it's just Kaisha. Jabasha. Rude Jabasha. Homies of Blessed Amalexia. A classic novel. I'm so just tempted to read every single book when I'm in these stores. I love how they they have them out. In every other game, you like, well, at least in Oblivion, you can't reach them. They're like behind the counter, away from you, so you have to buy the books. What is you can it? just get it is free knowledge. Knowledge for the people. This is what it's all about. So you got, oh, see, there you go. See, this is what Mac needed. Oh, there's another copy of Progress of Truth. That's interesting. If Mac had had free access to all these books, he would have been a much sharper warrior, I'm sure. But alas. But I think we like him just the way he is, don't we? It's charming. All right. I guess we just gotta find the Black Shock Corner Club. Sounds like a bad word when I say it like that. I don't know why.
Here we go. Go ahead. Oh, here's the happening place. We got some dudes hanging Summoned out in here. Summoned by another. Questions again. I've been looking for you, my man. I welcome you as a friend of my friend, young man. But I wish to go to my friend's bookstore. And these troublesome fools are in my way. I have tried to persuade them, but they hate my race. Oh, no. And I fear there will be violence, perhaps if you speak with them. But be careful and be ready. The sight of a free Argonian offends these racist thugs. Wow, this is getting intense. It would tarnish my Morag Tong honor to slay them. And I don't want to trouble my friend Seralis Golmus by fighting in his club. But I must go to my friend's bookstore <laughs> where we can talk in peace. If you have a way with words, I don't. Perhaps you can talk to them. Or if you have a way with money, they might be bought. Otherwise, I fear there must be bloodshed. What if I just kill them? Leave you out of it. Yeah, Jobasha. You and your Khajiit buddy. The, uh, the sore throat people. Jobasha, Julia. If you will agree to travel together with me there, I'll answer your questions. But before we go, I beg you to try to persuade these troublesome fools to leave us alone. Otherwise, I fear they will attack the moment we leave. Jeez Louise. Okay. Um... That's... That's crazy. Dude. You gotta screw off. Am I talking to you, Fetcher? No, I'm talking to the filthy lizard. So push off. Wow, what are you, some kind of filthy lizard lover? You want to give your little friend a big kiss? <laughs> oh, no. Okay, dude. You gotta screw off. I'm gonna save first. I want to just kill him. I really want to just kill him. Speak, trap. And now you're being polite. What do you Look want at these guys. Outlander? I haven't much time. Shut up. All right. Here we go. I really just want to throw down. And if we leave Julio out of it, hopefully we can just walk over the corpses to the bookstore. All right. Get out of our way, Enwa. We got issues with this filthy lizard here. Intimidate. I'm pretty intimidating. <laughs> I take your point. I hope you can work something out. Good. So it succeeded, right? It sounded like it succeeded. Okay, okay. He's just a filthy lizard. He can't help it. I'll leave him alone. That's right. Get the heck out of here. Are we ready to travel together? Okay. Do I have to convince all of them to leave or just one of them? Will you travel with me to Bosch's rare books? I guess we're going to find out. We leave the door to the foreign quarter. Okay, yeah, now look at this huge... <laughs> this paragraph of text that's just telling me to go down the hallway, pretty much. Yes, follow me to the place. I say goodbye as you follow me. Okay, here you come. All right, cool. That was actually... I'm surprised my intimidate worked. That's sweet. Oh, oh. All right. Man, they really... The Argonians straight up look like raptors in this game. Or at least their sort of dinosaur-esque origins are much more apparent in this game. Come on. All right, sweet. Cool, he's the last contact. Then I can return to guys. Yes, thank you very much. We should be free from distraction here. Now, I said I'd tell you about the Nervarine cult, so you can report back to Caius. And I don't know of any Six House cult, but I can tell you what I do know. I love how they all tell me I don't know anything about this, but I'll tell you about how I know nothing about this. Let's see what he has to say. I've never heard of such a thing. <laughs> House Dagoth was a Six House cult, but in the War of the First Council, they betrayed the other great houses and were destroyed for their treason. Yeah, we've heard this before, but I've never heard of anyone worshipping them. Dagoth Ur, the ancient head of House Dagoth, is the devil of the tribunal faith. But I've never heard of anyone worshipping him either. Alright, what do you know about Nevernin? Nevernin. Ne I can't even. <laughs> One day I'll say it right on the first try. When the Ashlanders joined Nerevar in the Battle of Red Mountain, he swore in his great ring, one clan under moon and star, to. That's. <laughs> that sounds like a 2008 online chat room username. To honor the ways of the spirits and rights of the land. But after the victory, Ashlanders say the power-hungry tribunal slew Nerevar in secret. 
Then, setting themselves up as gods, the tribunal and the great houses forgot Nerevar's promises to the tribes. Ashlanders say Nerevar will come again with his ring, cast on the false gods, and make good his promises to the tribes. Okay, so what are the cult surrounding this great story? To understand the cult, you must understand the history of the Ashlanders. Nerevar means something very different to the Ashlanders from what he means to the Dunmer of the Great Houses. You should also know about the persecution of the Nerevarine and the legacy of the false incarnate. Okay, boy. There's a lot to unpack here. For the Nerevarine cult is at the heart of the ancient conflict between the nomadic Ashlanders and the settled Great House Dunmer. Here is a summary for Caius, but ask your questions and I'll answer in detail. Yeah, tell me about the what's the false incarnate. Where's that at? Oh, boy, oh, boy. In the past, some have claimed to be the reincarnated Nerevar... The most recent is known as Peak Star. It's kind of like Jesus. People claim to be Jesus, resurrected Jesus. A figure of legend among the Wastes tribes for the last 30 years. And the temple says these false incarnates, yeah, disprove the prophecies since the false incarnates fail and it comes to nothing. Oh, but the mystical Neverine cult glorifies rather than shrinks from contradictions, inciting the appearance of failed incarnates as certain proof of Nerevar's coming rebirth okay and the great houses are in okay Whew. a lot of history here guys this is this is what everyone's been saying i need though some backstory so here it is in full in modern times Morwind is ruled by five great houses yes i'm aware of this halalu redoran telvani indoril and dress great houses culture is partially defined by its roots in ancient dumber tribal clans and partially by later imperial influences from other western cultures the Great Houses culture is only one of the native Dunmer cultures of Morwind. The other native culture, the Ashlanders culture, is a nomadic barbarian culture largely untouched by imperial influences. Yeah, that makes sense. Alright, cool. That kind of thing happens... Isn't that in, like, in Australia, the middle of the, middle of the land has, like, aborigines that still live the way they did? hundred years ago whatever seems similar similar situation um, anything else I can ask you the temple treats the Nerevarine prophecies as heresy heresy I always get hearsay and heresy mixed up as heresy and the temple imprisons and executes heretics unless prevented by imperial law but since the Nerevarine cult is hostile to the Empire the Empire does not interfere when temple persecutes the cult Ashlanders hate the temple, and particularly the Ordinators, for their ruthless treatment of Nerevarine cultists. Okay. Very epic. Alright. Thanks, man. Words are you have for me, citizen. Okay. No more words. I'm headed back to Caius, and hopefully he'll be pleased. Yeah, with what I've done. Ner uh, Nerev <laughs> Julio hadn't heard of the Six House cult, but he knew a lot about Nerevarine cult. He gave me notes to give to Caius. The main thing I gathered is that the temple's conflict with the Nerevarine cult is tied up with ancient grievances between the Ashlanders and the Great Houses. Yes, that's what I gathered as well. Very cool. Yes, I'll what do you want? I'd like to make my way. Excuse me. Okay. All right, cool. Now we're just going to silt stride my way back to Caius. Alright. Before we report to Caius, there were a few comments suggesting that I read the Progress of Truth book that we are supposed to give to him as part of our, uh, our homework. So, I'm going to check it out. I'm going to read it in full. I don't think it, it can't be that long. None of these, like, in-game books are super long or anything, but, um, I'm going to give it a read and see if it lights my way. Oh boy. Alright, here we go, guys. Progress of Truth, compiled by the Dissident Priests. Excerpt, concerning the points of Temple Doctrine challenged by the Dissident Priests. 1. The Divinity of the Tribunal. The Temple Doctrine claims there 
apotheosis was miraculously achieved through questing, virtue, knowledge, testing, and battle with evil. Temple Doctrine claims their divine powers and immortality are ultimately conferred as a communal judgment by the Dunmer ancestors, including, among others, the good Daedra, the prophet Veloth, and Saint Nerevar. Dissident priests ask whether Dagoth Ur's powers and the tribunal powers might ultimately derive from the same source, Red Mountain. Sources in the Apographa suggest that the tribunal relied on profanely enchanted tools to achieve Godhead, and that those unholy devices were the ones originally created by the ungodly Dw Dwemer sorcerer Kagranak to create the false construct Numidium. Uh, <laughs> I feel like this book is going to present me with more questions than answers, but let's, let's continue on. Chapter 2. The purity of the tribunal. The dissident priests say that the temple has always maintained a public face represented by the hierographa, the priestly writings, and a hidden face represented by the apographa, the hidden writings. Okay. The public account portrays the actions of the tribunal in a heroic light, while the hidden writings reveal secrets, untruths, inconsistencies, conflicting accounts, and varying interpretations which hint at darker and less heroic motives and actions of the tribunes. In particular, conflicting accounts of the battle at Red Mutant. Red Mutant. <laughs> Red, Red Mutant. Mutant. Red Mountain. Ray, I don't know where that came from. Red Mountain raised questions about the tribunal's conduct and about the source of their subsequent apotheosis. Also, there is good evidence that the tribunal have been concealing the true nature of the threat posed by Dagoth Ur at Red Mountain. Okay. Misleading the people about the tribunal's ability to protect Morrowind from Dagoth Ur and concealing a recent dramatic diminishing of the Tribunal's magical powers. Ooh, that is interesting. Chapter 3. Temple Accounts of the Battle of Red Mountain. Ashlander tradition does not place the Tribunal at Red Mountain, and holds that the Dwemer destroyed themselves rather than that Nerevar destroyed them. Interesting. I almost got it right that time. Nerevar. One time I'm going to get it right. Ashlander tradition further holds that Nerevar, aha, left Dagoth Ur guarding the profane secrets of Red Mountain while Nerevar went to confer with the Grand Council, i.e. the Tribunal, that Nerevar <coughs> died at the conference, not of his wounds according to the Ashlanders, but from treachery, and that subsequently the Tribunal confronted a defiant Dagoth Ur within, within Red Mountain, then drove Dagoth Ur beneath Red Mountain when he would not yield to their will. Okay, wow. Number four. The veneration of the Daedra saints and ancestors. While challenging the divinity of the tribunal, the dissidents do not challenge the sainthood or heroism of the tribunal. In fact, the dissident priests advocate restoring many of the elements of fundamentalist ancestor worship as practiced by the Ashlanders and by Saint Veloth. Exactly how this would work is debated inconclusively within the dissident priests. Number five, denial of the prophecies of the incarnate and persecution of the Nervarines. Though no consensus exists among the dissidents about whether the Nerevarine prophecies are genuine, all agree that the persecution of Nerevarines is unjust and politically motivated. Okay, interesting. The dissident priests do not reject mysticism, revelation, or prophecy as part of the religious experience. The dissidents have not resolved the issue of true or false insights. They have studied the mysticism of the Ashlander ancestor cults, in particular the rites of the Ashlander seers and wise women, and the prophecies of the incarnate. Many among the dissident priests have come to believe that the Nerevarine prophecies are genuine, interesting, and have made a systematic study of prophecies recorded in temple archives. Number six, authority of the Arcanon and the Ordinators. Here we go, diving deep. The dissident priests reject the authority of the Arcanon and the Ordinators. I agree. The temple hierarchy has been corrupted by self-interest and politics and no longer acts in the best interests of the temple or its worshippers. The dissident priests believe the Arcana and the Ordinators speak for themselves, not for the tribunal. I get that sense as well. Number seven, the Inquisition and the use of terror and torture by the Ordinators. Ord ordinators. Okay, interesting. Within the temple hierarchy, it is an open secret. The Ordinators rely on abduction, terror, torture, and secret imprisonment to discourage heresy and dissent. That's creepy. I didn't know that. The dissident priests feel the ordinators are either out of control or tools used to maintain a corrupt priesthood in power. Hmm, okay, this is getting interesting. Fundamentals of temple doctrine. Charity for the poor, education for the ignorant, 
protection for the weak. Though the dissident priests acknowledge that most rank-and-file priests honor the best traditions of the temple, they believe that many priests in higher ranks are interested more in love of authority and luxury than in the welfare of the poor, weak, and ignorant. Okay. Interesting. That's all I have to say about that. I hope that helps it make more sense for you guys. There's a lot going on. Um, I'm starting to understand the conflict a little bit more. But, uh, oh, what is all this? I forgot how much she has stash down here. Damn. Alright. This is like the bed of a high school kid. He's got like one textbook for a class that he's forgotten about. It's It's been there since the the first week of school. And then he's got his, his bowl, his sack. Can't, can't be without the sack. And then the, the bottle he stole from his dad's cabinet. <laughs> and drank all in one night. Okay. Caius Cosades. Are you here to discuss your orders, young man? Yeah, I got all this information for you. I have your report, and I'll make copies of your notes from Julio and the Progress of Truth. Give me time to read and digest all this. Yeah, I need time to read and digest all this, too. In the meantime, I'm promoting you to Journeyman. You're doing good work, and here are 200 drakes. Go out and treat yourself to a new pair of shoes. Thanks, Caius. A new pair of shoes. Wow. I'm like 10 years old. And go do some jobs for the guilds or other freelance work. Just keep your cover story current. Or go get some training. Then when you're fit and rested, come back and I'll have new orders for you. I'm pretty fit and rested. Let's just let's just go right at it. Well, I think I need... Let's see. Do I actually need to spend time so we can, like, quote-unquote, digest? Oh, no. Okay. He, that was quick work by Caius. We need an Ashlander informant. Good call. I have heard of a fellow in Aldrun named Hassor Zane Subani, an Ashlander who left the wastes to become a wealthy trader. They say the Ashlanders like to give and receive presents. Take these 100 drakes, find out what Zane Subani likes, and get him a gift. <laughs> okay. Maybe he likes a new pair of shoes. Then give him the gift and see if he will tell you about the Ashlanders and then never being called, then report back to me. Okay, so, similar thing, we just need more information now. Okay, I'm not sure where to find him, but I tried to, I tried the Aldscar Inn. Okay. It's a more respectable place than the rat in the pot. <laughs> the rat in the pot. What is a less respectable place than the rat in the pot? That's my question. Okay, so just breaking everything down, I'm trying to think about the progress of truth that we had read. Um, so there's conflicting accounts of what happened at the Battle of Red Mountain, which was between Nerevar's boys and the Dwemer. And the Dwemer were wiped out at the battle. And... It talks about how there were these tools there that made them godlike. I assume those are like Dwemer tools because the Dwemer are all about tools. And I think, if I'm understanding it correctly, Dagoth were and Nerevar were boys too. But there was some kind of treachery between... I don't understand what the tribunal is exactly when it re references the tribunal. Um, but... There was some treachery going on between Nerevar Tribunal and Dagoth Ur because of the the power of the tools. It's kind of uh, again very Lord of the Ringsy. I'm imagining gold tools. There's a volcano, and there is treachery between friends because of the godlike power that the tools give you. Um, and so I'm guessing that's when, what, Dagother goes bad or whatever. He, it talked about either the tribunal or Dagother killing Nerevar, but then there were accounts of Nerevar just like, I guess some people thought Nerevar bleeded out after the battle from his wounds, but then they were saying, no, it wasn't from the battle. It was from someone killing him. So they could take 
the the power for themselves. So I'm assuming that was Dagoth Ur, because I already know he's like a god. So yeah, I don't know. Interesting. There's, there's still there's just so much going on. But I think as I continue to play, it'll all start unraveling. Okay, that's the rat in the pot. So that's the one bar I don't want. Oh, I think he, he said it was going to be here, right? Old Scar... Old Rune Old Scar Inn. Very nice. Alright, my boy better be here. What is this guy's name again? Hasser. Yo. Where's my boy at? Shashev. Oh, man, the frame rate... Ah, let me just find Fathusa. What is it, Why does Fathusa sound like a name of a sidekick character in a 90s Disney cartoon? Okay. Okay, please. Where is... Where is he? Why is it so glitchy? This is just one little... What not Fathusa. It? It's not about anything. Where is Hasser? So many empty rooms. The five far stars. Come on. He's got to be here, right? I guess he could be at the... Uh... No, he... didn't he say specifically here? Let's see if I can ask about him. Yeah, here he is, right? He's a trader and a wealthy one. He has his own room here. He was born... Okay, well, where is he? He was born in Ashlander and knows their speech and custom and has grown rich by trading with them for the things prized by Westerners. Is that what you wanted to know? <laughs> oh my gosh, sorry. Is that what you wanted to know? Very passive aggressive. Okay, where is his room? In this, is he just, is he not in right now? What do you want? I want you to move out of the way. That's what I want. This is not a room. Man, things are getting so laggy for me. Ah, oh, it's just Shashev again. Sad. Okay, I'm gonna, guess he's not here right now I'm gonna call it that was a lot of reading um, but I'm glad I think I'm starting to understand the general story I think our boy Hasser Zane Zubani is out right now stop I'm just gonna wait here a few hours and until he comes back and then we'll see what gift I can get him I love how I have to get him a gift um. So here I will remain what, until the next outlander? let's play. As always, thank you to the patrons, thank you to the subscribers, and thank you to everyone who watches. And we will see you next week. Take care.